Metatox is produced using binaural recording technology, which means it's highly recommended that you listen to the podcast with a headset on rather than your speakers so that you can get the full effect of a binaural recording that gives you further depth of space and brings you further into our conversation. And with that, welcome to the show. Meta layers. So one of the things about having different meta layers is whether or not one of these layers uh, is actually keeping something that, that breaks someone's threshold. You want to develop genuine connections. However, in the real world, in real life, in RL, these connections, you can see if you're developing a, a connection or relationship with someone and something crosses that threshold. And as an example, I'll say, you know, you can begin to develop a relationship with someone that then shows that they're into a uh, child pornography. And you can feel that that's something that, that you disagree with and you don't want to have a relationship or a connection with someone that crosses that threshold. That's your prerogative. That's your ability to decide who and who you do and don't want to make a connection with in real life. However, by going forward with a philosophy of maintaining multiple layers, multiple identities, where you decide what it is that you want to maintain as a separate layer or maintain as a separate identity, and you're presenting one of your identities to uh, uh, people and you want to develop uh, you know, a real genuine connection with them, but you're only doing that through one of these layers, then in, in a way, you're not really presenting the true self. You're not really presenting all of yourself. You're only presenting, let's say, the side that they would feel compatible with or that they would agree with, and not really all, all of yourself. So how genuine of a connection could you really try to have if that's the approach that you're taking? Um, you know, in real society, we shun people who cross this threshold. You know, you talked about uh, how, you know, one person made comments of 9-11 and that, you know, a lot of people decided, hey, I don't want to associate with someone who, who's like that and who's, who has these kinds of remarks. Um, but that was their decision. So... You know, I'm not so sure that proceeding with something where you're not presenting all of yourself, you know, is really is really um, completely a good thing to do. Um, in addition to that, if you if you have one layer and you're refusing to continue to build upon that layer, to build on that identity, and instead you decide to, uh, you know. Um, build that into a different identity or a different layer, then, you know, a person can feel, okay, well, you know, what, what else is there of this person? And, and feel like, okay, you know, it's not really so genuine. It's not really so, you know, what else motivates this person? And there's parts of it that's lacking, you know, and a desire to, to really want to know more and to, to develop that connection. But it just not being there because that all exists in another layer and and that those those connections wouldn't they wouldn't know they wouldn't know that you have all these other layers all these other connections and it's only by your decision to want to share those other identities that 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 person could actually know about it um you know i think i think this is something we we need to continue to think about and work through um I understand the purpose of it. I just, 
I'm just not convinced of what the right thing to do is. So uh, those, that's my feedback. And um, uh, great show. Uh, both of you have so much to uh, share and so many good insights. And uh, really, really enjoying the show and uh, great work. So it's the argument that if you separate parts of your identity or that you're lying in effect. I think so. That that you're basically hiding something about yourself that could be revealed and you know, should be revealed so that people can gauge you and I don't know, in a way I guess judge you and see <laughs> I don't I don't understand. Do you think it. we you should go for some sort of e-harmony process before you talk to anyone. I don't know, because that's not realistic. It's not even realistic in how we interface with people in the real world, right? Because... Yeah, of course not. In fact, it's just a the extension of the way that you converse on the internet is the same as you do in real life. You don't walk up to people and give them your entire history and your likes and dislikes. You build up slowly. You're obviously looking for points of contact. You're not looking for... Stuff to put the beat the person off. <laughs> right. And yeah, you're looking to connect on a certain level and, and the same, you know <laughs> the same pool of which you'd be interested in. I don't know. I mean, I tell you what it I tell you what it is, it's like the the, the internet and the way that it parcels up communities, there's like a, there's almost there's a certain level of pre selection and as much as say for instance you come to a channel called Wowcast all those people are, be play, are playing well, you know. So that's that's your initial point of contact. That's your initial point of connection. Now, the person, the type of person that plays well or plays MMOs may well fit other connections. May well, you know, meet you at, at other points. So you know, there's there's a certain level of pre-selection. I suppose it's the same if you're in real life and you meet somebody at a club that deals with a particular, or you'll meet somebody at a football match, or meet somebody in a bar or you know there's there's levels of pre-selection but it's not nowhere near as much as there's on the internet I mean, you're going to a specific place that may well be dealing with something that's relatively uh, well not necessarily niche but relatively small group of people like-minded people are there well the other like the other topic we're gonna talk about is transparency right and and how while we're talking about how we can create layers to represent ourselves online, that the new technologies that are available now and the way the system is going to work in the future is that it's going to be much harder to not have all of your layers exposed uh, to some degree, especially if it's attached to a, mm. like a, an identity of yours. And so that <clears throat> the read write web, uh, read write web uh, link was basically about recognizer and facial recognition software and how all they have to do, so all someone would have to do is take a, a you know, a smartphone, camera it to your face, and suddenly they they have an association with your blogs and your Flickr account and your your music tastes and your Twitter and your Facebook and everything. And basically that, so therefore your face, like your physical face, is something you can't change, you know, because it's not, because we're not talking about mass here, we're talking about layers. You can't like it's gonna be very hard to hide that and you know we had talked about on a previous episode about the metadata associated with your ID now and you know they'll know like what you've been surfing on you know like the, the data will be able to or the software will be able to know and trigger you know what you search for you know like what are the high points that you know uh, Jeppy searches for what is Alachia's niche on Amazon.com you know what is what are the, the high either the things that they're into and and that all that data is like out there like every time you use Google every time you like something on Facebook now all that metadata is being collected and associated with you and but associated with an ID right so that if you've already split your IDs if you already split yourself down I you know I don't even know if I like the word layers anyways because no. Yeah, I, I, I never, I, think, I never really like that. Because people like it. Because what it does is it, it's like exposing, isn't it? When you start, when we start talking about layers, it's like you're you're pulling back, and there's another layer, there's another layer, and and, and eventually there's a layer which you're not too fussed with. Right. So right. I know it, it, it gives that it certainly gives that impression. 
I, I quite like that idea of uh, the Lego brick idea that you connect at various levels to different people so if you were to build a Lego representation of your connections with all the various different people say you had an infinite number of colours you would connect on three Lego dots with some person and you kept on two and then they connect with you on this one and then they would connect on that one and you'd have this sort of like a 3D visualisation of how you connect with different people and each um, I don't know what you call what do you call those dots on the Lego brick nubbins those six or whatever however many there are yeah I don't know what they call them no, they need, they'd all, I'm sure they call them something technical but I call them like little nubbins and <clears throat> you could just you could start to see because this idea that you could ever c connect fully with somebody I think that's a misnomer I think the idea that one person because basically if there's one person that likes everything you like and is into everything you like and has the same tastes and, and the same fears and the same likes and dislikes that person would be a nightmare because that person would be an absolute nightmare I like the idea of building blocks a lot I think that's a really cool analogy and it's a really good it's a lot better than layers to me because it's not like it, it's like where we connect it's not about like where you're like where you're hiding pieces of yourself but like where you choose to connect although there's I guess there's probably some <laughs> Lego pieces you keep somewhere else you don't play it you put on you don't put on the same little board <laughs> as everyone else oh, yeah. yeah there's those there's those black pieces which you never use yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> or the clear ones yeah yeah that's a really good analogy I like that one a lot better uh, building blocks and 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 uh, ways of ways of connecting to people that we can connect with and and I just um I'm I don't like the idea that people feel like when they when they put themselves out there in the culture of the online world and the metaverse or whatever that they feel like they have to come as everyone else's their twitters have to look like everyone else's twitters their facebook posts need to look like everyone's twitters. you know, have you seen that like when you when you watch Facebook and you see how people interact, you, you see sort of like the. Um, do you notice a trending like that goes on in terms of how they post stuff? Like I I do with my friends or the people on my Facebook. You know, how they post things, what they say. You know, the types of updates they give you, the way they post pictures. You know, the the MySpace generation was a very good example of like that kind of tone of how people reveal themselves and feel like that that's how they're supposed to connect. Everyone connects with the same like, you know, generic user pick and everyone has this generic set of T V shows they listen or watch and favorite music, etc. And and mm. uh yeah, and it's um th they're afraid to come as like with the whole package. Like, you know, like it's it's um and, and I don't wanna say package and I don't wanna say layers now. <laughs> so I gotta come up with them. <laughs> You know, with another an analogy, but I don't have one. But the the point is, is that it's not. I don't think it's hiding. I don't, I don't think it's a mask. Uh, I think that. I think that, when we are, interacting with other people, like say, if I were to meet you in real life and I were to shake your hand and say hi, hello, my name is Alagia. How do you do? You you turn around, and you you turn back, and you shake my hand and you say hi, hello. I immediately have a. A response to that, right? I'm reading that the biological data is being transferred between the two of us. Mm. You know how firm, the, yeah, how tons firm the handshake is. The way if you look me directly in the eye, you know, does your breath stink? Mm. Does your, you know, what's your body odor? Well, how are you Am dressed? I how, yeah, <laughs> how is your stance? You know, what does your hair look like? A ton of stuff is being transferred, mm. and, and we and are most of it imperceptible. We don't even realize we're doing. Yeah, yeah, and it's and it's all like being fed into that, you know, little little processor in the back of our head that's that's interpreting that data and creating you know judgments from it and not just judgments but you know li little labels and organizations as to how you're supposed to read the person what they're thinking you know the looks they're giving you the first words out of their mouths all that stuff is like data that you can you can uh, you know it's all attached to our biological shells and it's immediately transferred when you meet online when you have digital transfer it's a lot different and I think I think that's going to change, though. You know, when I when I'm looking at the future of 
how social media is being integrated into almost all of our RL aspects. I think that is going to change a little bit more, where we're going to have an open ID and it's going to have a lot more than just you know our Twitter account information, our emails. I think it's going to come with you know a lot more transparency as to who we are immediately, so that when like say we're in Vine Point and someone new comes in, it's like who is this Chuck E. Cheese guy, right? You know, like, and suddenly I'd, I'd be able to, you know, like right now I use Google, right? So first thing I'll do, I'll mm. Google somebody and I'll look to see if they have any mm. metadata attached to them. You know, all that in the future, I think we'll have, you know, we'll have an association with an ID that per a person goes in with. Right now, I think people are still floating around. People are still trying to discover who the fuck they are online and and who they want to be online. And that's, that's that I think is the, the critical point right there in, and the, the point that I think that Phoenix was trying to make in that clip was you do get to choose more about who you want to be online, you know, how you want to connect. You, and, you get to pick and choose all yeah, the time. Yeah, you know, you, you, that, that What you were talking about before, that first real life um, uh, first impression, all that data that's sent across, you know, our biological meta net, as it were, that, you know, that's something that we're programmed to do. We're programmed to like people that will do us good you know we're, we're programmed to uh, accept people that that are going to be positive for us you know we, we react differently to people who potentially are threatening or you know who may in the future cause us problems and the way that we behave that way is is very different than say you're just getting it um type words or anything like that so are you saying that at some stage that what we can find out quickly via google or what, we, what can be found out via the traces that we've left behind would also cross over to real life uh, connections or real life meetings that you'll be able to somehow bring that information up or definitely like you know like like that article had had shown on that with the with the smartphone with the recognizer software i mean that's that's you're you're not only now you're shaking the person's hand right and you know the person says their name to you uh suddenly say you know you have your phone it's out you can immediately pull up the person's picture and it associates that the, the face recognition will come in and it'll say hey this person has a twitter account has you know blah blah, blah. here's their cloud tag they you know they often say the word um uh, you know, camera or moose or things that are associated with, you know, hunting or photography or, you know, cooking. And, and so all that data, I think, is going to be attached to a way that you can have augmented, you know, reality and, well, actually augmented da data in reality. And then, and that's kind of weird because it's the opposite of like what a lot of <laughs> new games are coming out with. But, um, and that, that's going to be that extra step that I think that you can have, uh, in a terms of the way that we, you know, the, the way that we can use the meta to actually transfer more successfully as, as to how we look at a person, that we see them as a whole, like, so that you're not just, we're not just making these assumptions about people based off of the way they look to us or the way that society tells us to look at people, that when we have metadata attached to real life people that we are kind of reconstructing those ideas uh, and, and being able to gain, you know, more more genuine look at a person. So, mm, scary though. That's scary. That yeah. scares the crap out of me. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't. It? <laughs> oh, you're into that, huh? I've looked in. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> I hate to see what my tags are. Geez. Yeah. But this, I, we talked about this a wee while ago. This book by uh, Cory Doctorow. Mm -hmm. Somebody who, who I'm hoping you'll read at some stage. Give you a bit of that geek cred back you've lost so much of. Mm -hmm. He um, wrote the book uh, Down Now in Disneyland, and the, he ha he describes this process. He doesn't go into huge details. But he, he kind of just it's kind of a surface thing. That basically, in I think some there's some sort of inbuilt processor in people's brains, or it's, you know some sort of chip that allows them when they meet somebody new to 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 check on their reputation, and he calls this reputation woofy, which is a fantastic word I think. And basically, the way that people earn this reputation is just by being good. You know, if you're an interesting person, or you've done good deeds, or you've helped people out, or you're, you know, you're some sort, you've gained some sort of reputation, people can give you that, give you points. They can, they can, you know, they can review you and give you points. So, you meet this person. They've they've led a relatively good life. They've been very interesting and entertaining. Their woofy points are way higher. You know, so when you go to read 
you know, or they've written a book, you know, it's also, you earn these points for all sorts of different things, you know, and um, and lose points as well. So if you if you're you know you, one evening you're a bit of an ass, you might lose a lose a chunk of woofy points, and it's just this sun. It's just the all that data you were talking about when you meet somebody is suddenly augmented by a huge other layer, a huge layer, not only of what that person has done, but what people think of what that person has done. You know, what, what their, their, their comments on that person are, what their, you know, what their beliefs about that person's sort of background are. So it's very interesting. A, a fantastic book as well, it's free, if anybody wants to get hold of it. So it's one of these, uh, what, did, what did you call that license? Where you can just get it for common something? Like Creative that? Commons. Creative Commons, mm-hmm. yeah. So uh, Corey, Dr. Hope puts out all of his books that way. So people can read them and if they want to pay for them, they can also buy them online and so on. But yeah, very good book. But just that, that, that concept of uh, that your your worth is not based upon money or anything else. It's based upon how people see you, how people perceive you and what, what these woofy points have given you over the years. It's cool. Yeah, so it's like it's like accumulated data that normally would completely go wasted, right? About a person and would never build upon anything and that yeah that it that it actually takes that and utilizes it for you know future references um Mm. yeah i think i think that's really i think that i think we're going to see a lot more of that in the future especially with mobile technology we're going to see a lot more of accumulated data of a person being translated into how we connect with people in the in the in the in the present Mm. so where are we now though where where do you think things are now with uh, this this idea that what you the way you uh, travel on the internet is right. somehow I mean, what, how right now what happened is because of Facebook what happened is we have this really weird or I've what I've seen is a really weird merger of two different types of online users of medicines right you have the people who came on who use the the meta as a form of expression form of escape from the you know uh, normalcy of the world and you know the, uh, the the perceived notions of 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 a defined box structure of, of what of what a person's supposed to be right and then you have the the Oprah you know Kutcher Twitter Facebook influx I mean and then this is the higher you know volume of population that came in and they came in as themselves they came in as exactly themselves. They don't even bother using a pseudonym, right? You know, these are the people who use their first and last names online because they believe, they truly believe that you cannot establish yourself in any sort of culture or community and not be real to who your RL identity is. So if you don't come in as Eric Smith and you instead you come in as, you know, uh, Chocolate Moose or whatever, mm. that's not... That's not valid. You will never make a name for yourself to those people. In that in that community, in that culture, it's it's very impossible for them if you don't associate yourself with a face, a name, a profile picture. You know, is that a trust issue? Is that a matter of trust? I think it is. I think it is. It's 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 sort of like uh, there. You know, the uh, it's it's sort of like you can be a cumulative cumulative personality of many people. You know, like we when we talked about on on that. The, one of those previous podcasts we did, where we were talking about uh, what was that girl's name? Um, the oh, the paladin lady. Yeah, uh, yeah. And in how it turns out that it wasn't really that girl, and it wasn't really this hot chick playing WoW. It was these like, who knows what it so was, it right? Dies. Yeah, yeah. Um, that that's why it, it. A lot of things like that doesn't legitimize the fact that people are who they say they are, and can can sit there and be these global crazy personalities and and be able to blog 16,000 posts per day and you know and and uh and become this perfect person that people want to follow. No, people want to know that that person that they're idolizing or are listening to or really respecting is actual an actually an actual real person because that's how those people mm-hmm. interface. They they are they like the Oprahs, they like the the Kutchers, they like to see who they're they like to be able to put a face and associate uh, reality to the person and so for them they value the actual existence of a person and not the essence so mm. it's a really big difference uh, and so what I see right now is this two two diverging entities and, and then you have this really fluid kind of, I call it like the, the hippies of the meta right you know and 
the the Bohemians and and they're totally cool with being you know they've tried the whole RL thing they've tried to be you know I am exactly who I am but what happens is they're not part of the heteronormative way of living they 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 came to the meta because they wanted to feel like they could have a place or find uh, a demographic that actually fit the things that they were into and you know that could be really dark sexual niches that could be really extremely bizarre hobbies it could be you know some people would see some you know for us in our culture like say in the bind point, cu- bind point culture we're totally cool with people dressing up like anime characters right you know like we have no issues we, we insist upon it yeah yeah <laughs> there are people who will see people doing that and think what the f- fuck are these people doing grow up why are you dressing up like a cartoon character you're fucking like you know what 25 years old grow up already you know why are you dressing up and carrying a big sword and you know and and yeah there there's 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 a whole and I, i'm gonna say it again there's a whole layer to people that doesn't necessarily um i don't know can i think of a done the word um there's whole there's whole other facets about. Mm. Facet's right. a good word, you see. Facet. See, I, I was, we were thinking about this the other day because we, I think we both agree. Uh, we said it earlier on the show that the word layer is a bit can cause confusion because mm-hmm. it's like because when you when you cover something, layers immediately you think making the covers and therefore yep. makes you think things being hidden yep. and having to be uncovered and unlayered and things have to be removed in order for you to get to the the center so it does kind of give that impression that by creating layers you're in fact hiding Mm -hmm. other bits and pieces whereas in fact what you're doing is you're turning your best a lot of people will turn their best side to a a facet say you have a jewel it's got a dozen different facets you know one of them will be perfect one of them will meet you know we'll keep going for all these different analogies but the fact that a person, a complex person, has many likes and dislikes, has many hobbies and things that they may well find they don't get lots of uh, people understanding. You know, this people are complex. I mean, all that crap I just said, that means people are complex. <laughs> they have lots of these bits and pieces and they connect to different levels of different people. So I like the, the idea of facets of a jewel or nubbing to a leg of brick or you know, these are these are points of connection. I mean, this idea that somehow you can say, say for instance, you meet somebody, they're into the, they're into a particular game. You're like, would you, I mean, we're into WoW, we're into WoW, we're into World of Warcraft, or they're into you know EverQuest or whatever. So you've already got a point of connection. You can already you already have a language you can discuss things in. You know, you already have something you can talk about. You already have a conversation starter. So you talk about the World of Warcraft. And then you talk about, oh, well, I, you know, I also play uh, like Battlefield 2. So you can talk about Battlefield 2. Oh, and I like comics. You know, a lot of people who play World of Warcraft happen to also like comics. They also like science fiction television shows. So then there's four or five points of contact. Then one of them says, oh, and I also like uh, going out and murdering prostitutes. Bang. That's the end of that conversation, isn't it? Because that's the, the layer you didn't want to know about. See what I mean? It's not like... But all those others were, po- were points of contact. They're not negated by that, but the overall package is ruined. Then, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, and, and that's that's the uh, that's the fallacy of too much transparency, right? Is that? Yeah, because you get caught murdering prostitutes. No, <laughs> like, <laughs> like for example, like here's an example of something that I I've, I've actually seen where you have a person who has uh, who has been sexually abused, um, mm. and and they connect on a level with someone and then and you know they have points of interest they're interested in the same foods they like poetry together you know they 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 can actually have really cool conversations with each other about you say gaming mechanisms and and all sorts of things and then it turns out there's so much transparency that you know and the the person the the person that they're connecting with it turns out that they're a porn addict right that they're really Mm -hmm. into hardcore really like you know raunchy porn nasty stuff yeah and that suddenly becomes the thing that says, "Oh well, you know, I've, 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 I've I can point to, uh, you know, I can, I can weave in and out and connect with you on all these levels." But here's this one point that triggers something in me that, mm. you know, I can't, you know, I can't, I can, it negates all the rest. 
and it would mm. it would you know and it's it a major did. point of contention yeah mm-hmm. that i mean that that's a that these are the extremes that aren't that would be an extreme where this is what tends to happen <clears throat> i think the vast majority of people will connect at certain points and the, you know there'll be some you know there'll be stuff that they're not that interested in so when they're talking to that particular person it see this is where this sort of uh, idea of, of a connection being sold on both sides. If you if you know that somebody's not interested in a particular element, but they are interested in other elements, if you constantly keep trying to draw them back to the element they're not interested in, that relationship won't tend to last because people will say, oh, you know, every time I start talking to him about football, he starts talking to me about photography. You know, I don't like photography, I like football. You know, so, you, you know, your discussions with them tend to stand, tend to stay in a certain area. The fact that they like football doesn't stop you talking to them about the things you like to talk about. You know, I mean, it doesn't. It's only when you talk about those sort of extremes, you know. It's like I always remember people. <laughs> this is a bit mad. This is all very uh, streaming talk that we're doing that. But I remember people saying about Hitler. They said, "Oh, Hitler, you know, did you know he was a vegetarian and he really liked dogs?" And it's like it was like to say, "Well, you know, yeah, he was a, he was a genocidal murderer, complete nutter." You know, he, he raped and pillaged his way through Europe, he killed six million Jews. But on the other side, you know, on the, the other side, he was a vegetarian and he liked dogs. It's like somebody could say, oh, well, you see, I can accept the vegetarianism, I can accept the, uh, the, the liking of dogs, but, you know, I'll ignore all the other stuff. <laughs> it's a very, uh, very strange attitude. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's, that's extreme, isn't it? So exactly. Well, it doesn't, I mean, those are extreme examples, but that's still a, that still does affect how you connect with other people on those different uh, on those different wavelengths, I suppose, because there will be something, and it doesn't have to be that extreme, that will at some point, you know, if you have too much transparency, will do something to affect your your ability to connect with that person on the same level. Because you, you base a lot of your connection on an assumption. Like, that's how we, that's how we operate as human beings right now. We we do we have a we have a little system in the back of our heads that that say you know oh well you know I met this person they're very intriguing you know it seems like they're really you know um, they could really wrap their heads around this idea and that idea and they're really into that and they share this and they inspire me to do this and then there'll be something if there's too much transparency that'll come along and you'll just go that person is fucking crazy like they're you know and nothing you know what other connection how strong it is is going to erase that like it's it's one of those things where it's just like it's you it's open the door's box you know, sand in the vaseline mm-hmm. but yeah see so you are are you arguing against transparency is that what you're doing? no uh, i i'm i'm saying that i i like transparency i do like i like the 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 reason, okay, here, here's why I like transparency, and here's why I like the, the, the facets and the nubbits or nuggets or whatever you're calling them. Um, <laughs> nubbins. <laughs> nubbins. Because the whole thing about why I'm, I'm, I'm all into layers or whatever, um, it's because people, like this medium online, the, the meta medium, is just beautiful and perfect and laid out wonderfully to smash all of our conceptions of how we should interact and be as human beings. Because in in the RL society, the way that we have to interact with each other and the way that we civilizations form and the way they construct themselves lend to, in my opinion, opinion the suppression of humanity. And mm. I, I think that in the metaverse, we can actually, like I said, you know, when I was talking, when I was, well, when we were, starting to talk about um, facets and like cosplay or whatever, that there are so many ways in which we connect as human beings and, and our interests are varied. And the problem is, is that, you know, just as like, like when you, when you start to see and you look at the, the, the accumulation of data on the internet, why is it continually growing? It, do, are we creating data out of nothing? Like, are we becoming more human are we evolving suddenly and suddenly there's more data no i think that there has always been this data about human beings that they that that this data is just now coming into our you know a cognition that we are just now seeing it for the first time like we're able to see immediately how people live on the other side of the world we're able to see where our words connect where they don't connect we're able to see like what people on the other side of the planet think is the norm and what other people don't uh, we're able to see the ugly, the bad, the good, and 
able to realize that other people may be into things that uh, our standard, you know, culture um, in the RL don't conform to. That that they would immediately say that's weird, that's that's just too bizarre, or you know, that's childish, or that's immature, or you know, that's not how you're supposed to behave. And and I think I think humans are much more varied than what we see in the real world. And I think we're seeing that in the meta, and especially when I, I look at the data online about people, and, and as I discover people, I've discovered that people are just so more, they're just, they're just so multidimensional mm. than what you could ever believe they could be. And it's absolutely fascinating to me, because you would, you would sit there and you'd go to, like say, a software company, and you would look at these programmers, and you would look at each one of them and you'd be like, okay, that guy's a nerd, and all he thinks about is coding, and you know he reads books, and he goes home and he plays WoW, and you know he watches his Battlestar Galactica, and then he sleeps and dreams of Princess Leia, right? And mm-hmm. and and then he goes back, and that's all he thinks about, right? You would never think that that person was into all sorts of things. I don't know. I'm not even going to name examples because that's the thing. You just don't know, and and that's what I have found is that. The, the you know the assumptions you make about the way a person is supposed to be molded per what we're taught to perceive is a lot different and then there people go really really deep I mean and and it's and, and they have so many things about them that can't be just described in a like box or can't be described in you know a, you know <laughs> little check marks about a person and and uh, that's that's what I that's what I like about transparency and that's what I like about is it, transparency exposes that for me. Transparency exposes that there is this world out there that, and, and there are all these interactions and connections that go beyond what we would consider standard connections. And what I like about the, you know, the, the facets and being able to create any facet you want and, and being comfortable and okay with using anonymity to some degree to feel like, to feel okay to do that, that, that to me is better than saying, well, you know, here's my Facebook account, and this is who I have to be, and I can't say anything else, and that happens. Like, I don't care who you are. Like, when, like, say if my RL Facebook, right? I know that you know the data online. And in fact, uh, there's an article I can link to about how Facebook data, and not just Facebook data, but all your data that's associated with your RL data is is being used more and more every day for people to assess who you are in the employment market, mm-hmm. and. That's, that's scary as well. Yeah, that is. And so, of course, if you know that, what dumbass would freaking post that he's into, you know, <laughs> he's into. He, yeah, yeah. Fact, it's weird. It, it, even if you have uh, several Facebook messages saying, oh, I got completely caned last night and, you know, I was drinking and, you know, you know, even stuff like that. Or say you were working for another, or you, you've had a previous job and, you know, you stick up as oh, I'm not going into work so I'm going to phone in and pretend to be sick. I mean you only got to have an employer, a potential employer look at that and think to themselves, okay, well this person's not trustworthy. The fact of the matter is prior to all that information being available, that person would have turned out to be probably a, a, a excellent employee. You know, there would have been no you see what I mean that 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 it's it's almost like a false thing in as much as that everybody occasionally will phone in sick, you know, at, you know, I guess by everybody, but you know, everybody you know, has, you know, does things wrong. There's people make mistakes, but things happen. The fact that now somebody can go onto a page where you've completely done a biography of your life day by day and see these failings and, and, and slip ups and mistakes and then dis- and they make they make a decision, a, a decision that, you know, is life changing, you know, whether they're going to employ you or not, is it's, it's mental, it's, you know. <laughs> it's getting it nice scary and 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 it's 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 false because <clears throat> just because you then fo- you employ somebody who you couldn't find any bad information about doesn't mean they haven't got any just happens to me they didn't bother sticking it all on facebook right and it's not just facebook although facebook is probably like you know facebook's the, like the, the uh, lead contender yeah, like 400 million people so yeah well and not only that but the way that 400 million people i know i know it's, it's insane just, I, who could even imagine that like, isn't it you know, apart from India, I mean, it's, it's, anyway, so, <laughs> it's 400 million people, it's absolutely mind-boggling. Yeah, 
and the, and the, the the way that data flows, the way that data happens is what what Facebook does is it just gets people to put data out there. It gets people to say, oh, here's a picture of when we went out to that party. Here's a picture of when we went on that vacation. Here's a picture of when we, uh, you know, decided to you know swing from trees, and and here's a mm -hmm. picture of you know there's all you know and and that once that data is like we said before once that data is out there when 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 that metadata about you is out there and some of that stuff you don't even have control over they can post those pictures and you don't have control over those pictures yeah, you can exactly. control you maybe people's pictures yeah. yeah you can maybe control what if it's tagged to you or not but even then mm. it, it's still out there it's still hey look here's a picture of so-and-so you know and and that to me it's like it's you have to you're gonna have to figure out like i like Let's say there's a there's a meetup, right? I think I was invited to go to to some WoW meetup in up north in Austin. I think uh, Stompalina mm. Roarcast was hosting it, and and I really wanted to go actually because I wanted to to be able to meet WoW players and I wanted to be able to talk with other people and and kind of just get into the RL community of WoW players. Mm. But for me, I'm I'm very you know cautious about my my RL identity and. There's no way I can know. Like I can't go to places like that, right? Because I don't know if someone's going to take a picture of me and post it. I don't know if you know someone's going to you know discover my real name by looking at my credit card while I'm paying for food. I you know and so for me I have to be very protective of how I interact. And it's the same reason why I, I don't really feel like I go. I would want to go to BlizzCon either because I don't want. Mm. It's you not made that a decision I don't to keep those those two sides of you completely separate. Right. I mean, you made that decision, and unfortunately, it's given you a level to, level of limitation. You know. Yes, it sucks, and I don't mm. mind if they know my RL identity. I really don't. I don't <clears> care <throat> if people know like what I look like, and I don't really care if mm. you know people know what my real name is. I don't want the people in my RL knowing who Alachi is. I don't want them to know that that's Alachi. Yeah, and it's not. It's the other way. It's thing. the other that's, way. Yeah, it's yeah. the other way around. And um, so for me, that's that's that was the kicker. And and I, I, I noticed it as soon as I put myself like that's why people who are really cautious about privacy about themselves and they don't want who they are to be accessible to everybody and their mother, they don't form a Facebook page. That is, the absolute like key to staying, out of out of the the spectrum of of accessibility is don't create a Facebook page. I know many people who are very, they don't want, they're like, you don't need to see me. You don't need to see the pictures that I took of me and my kids. You don't need to see my Christmas fucking album. You know, you don't need to know what music I like. That's my information. I don't want to share that. And that's valid. You know, people don't want that. So, you know, for me, that's great that they don't create a Facebook page because I'm telling you, once you create a Facebook page, even if you put no data on there, even if it's a white picture with ne like complete blank space, Suddenly, you will, you will find other people creating metadata for you. So, oh yeah, exactly. Yeah. People were going, oh yeah, I know such and such. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. and so all of a sudden, they're they're giving all the stuff away they don't want to be given away. It's interesting though that in order, to, you're talking about how these Facebook pages are relatively generic, so that your friends are pretty much sharing the same sort of photos, the same sort of stuff, and even the same sort of information that potentially other people would know we were doing. But it's almost like a you show me me yours I'll show you mine kind of thing it's like a you know if if in order for me to get the suck the information out of you or, or get the data out of you or, or, or get deeper into understanding the the nitty-gritty about you I need to share as well I need to give as well as get it's like the Hannibal Lecter thing isn't it where he wouldn't talk to to uh, uh, Jodie Foster unless she told him secrets about her life he wouldn't he wanted to you know there had to be a quid pro quo, a tit for tat kind of thing. And uh, I see that a lot. I see where, I mean, it's the sort of, per I mean, if you're like a hermit and you don't want to connect, then don't connect, that's fine. I can understand that. And these are the sort of people that maybe don't reach out and don't use the tools available. But if you want to connect, it's almost like you have to, you know, you have to share in order to get back. I don't, you know? no, being I... A voyeur, being a voyeur doesn't seem to be a, a very welcome thing, I don't I... think. I, I don't know. I think it is. I think I think on on Facebook, I don't see that. I don't see the quid pro quo thing. I don't see the you show me yours, I show you mine. It's hey, you know, this is me and this is me and this is me again and hey, this is me again, and and then mm. you have the, the everybody's voice. doing that. Aren't they? Yeah, yeah, and it's not. They're not doing it because they're they want to know what you're doing. They're doing it because they have this compulsion. They want you to know what they're doing. Yeah, 
and uh, and and then people can react to that. Then the voyeurs come out, and then they you know, they watch. Like I'm a voyeur on Facebook. That's all I do is is <laughs> <laughs> I just look. I don't ever post. You know, um, uh, on my own. Wouldn't be great if Facebook tagged people who went to the page. They yeah. Said, oh. Oh my god! And that, it was on your page for thirty-two minutes. You know, like, YouTube. What? I think you can do that on YouTube. You could, <laughs> you could uh, open up an option to allow people to see what you browsed on YouTube. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's like, wow, am I that? Am I, am I ready for that kind of transparency? I don't think so. But not yeah. on YouTube, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but on yeah, but on Facebook, I noticed that the second I created a Facebook account, suddenly I was being tagged left and right, and I was like, oh shit. You know, like I, in you, and I was like constantly on tagging my pictures, and I didn't want, and and then you just like at some point I was like, fuck it, you know, like uh, you know, like I can't control this, and and I'm gonna have to get used to the fact that people who know me, they're all, this is very normal for them. It's very normal yeah. for them to expose themselves online and everything that they do, where someone takes, you know, and I, I hate to say this, it's like a flash photography, you know, the point and shooters with the flash, I. And it's like you know how many of those pictures of you, you you don't you don't get a choice when people snap those pictures of you, that's what's going online. And then suddenly because you're there for them to tag it to, that's it. You're you're in. And I was I was floored when I realized how many photos are actually tagged with my name that I never uploaded. So I have all these like photos associated with myself, but I never uploaded a single one of them. It's funny when when I sort of thought was first getting to know you, you were like a, like the Yeti. Or Sasquatch, or whatever, what do they call it in America, the, the Bigfoot. Uh huh. <laughs> because, like, uh, do, you remember, do you remember that video of the Bigfoot that they had out a while back, a long, long time back? So, sort of like, this guy, this actually is a guy in a costume, by all accounts, mm -hmm. sort of stomping across the uh, the plains. I remember somebody, you'd gone to a concert and somebody had taken a photo of you, and it was like, it was blurry as fuck, it was an awful picture. It was hot, you know, you couldn't even make out. Like, there's no, you couldn't make out who it was, really, mm -hmm. honestly. But it, for it was up, it was up for about twenty minutes, I think, before you, uh, you, you, you issued your cease and desist. <laughs> and uh, I had the photo, and I, you know, I think it's that it was like Bigfoot, it was like like a like a UFO spotting. <laughs> so this, this is for you, you know, for I knew any better than I did. Uh, no, 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 I, I, did I am Bigfoot. Uh, the secret's out. Like, <laughs> I was like, I was like, try, I thought well, maybe I could run it through some sort of software and see it up there. And and you know how shocked was I to find out that you were a 13-year-old boy? It was scary. Yeah, yeah. Most people are. Yeah, but the, see, this can how can you have? I mean, is there such a thing as pure transparency? Is anybody purely transparent on the internet? Is it? Are there people who are just sharing everything, every little facet of their lives? Yeah, yeah, there are. But, like everything, because we, you're still, you're still censoring. Everybody, even on Facebook, you're still censoring. You're still, you know, the fact that you're with a group of people, say you're, you know, you're in your twenties, early twenties. It's, it's, it's not frowned upon for you to go out drinking. But you know, it's not these are things. You know, it's not frowned upon you for to go out and have a good time. It's what, it's what young people do. You know, so when you're sharing pictures of you sort of like high-eyed at a disco, you know, or lying on the floor, or sleeping on a bench or whatever, it's funny, and people, and, and your, um, you know, your peers are fine with that type of thing. Obviously, you don't want to say we talked about earlier, you don't want an employee, potentially employer seeing that type of stuff. But you're still saying, there's still, there's still maybe other facets of your complex person that is not being put on Facebook. You know, the stuff that you don't talk to anybody about these, these, these you know there, there has to be I can't, I can't believe that there's not some facets of, of everybody that aren't hidden or at least kept for a very small audience there are some people who are really monodimensional and I've met them and there just really <laughs> isn't anything else there is no, there's no niche that you're going to dig out there's no skeletons behind the closet they are exactly who they say they are, and there's nothing else because that's just not how deep their you know their their psychology goes. You know that's just not it. The, they are who they say they are because that's what they're interested in, and they don't see a problem with being that person and mm. being and, and totally you know enveloping themselves in being that person. And there's they don't 
they don't fear it. They don't they don't fear any aspect of it, and they're completely okay with you know exposing that to everybody and and being saying, hey, this is me, you know, like, and this is what I like, and this is what I do, and I don't what so what shrug, you know, I don't I don't I don't care if you know that. There are people like that, but you know, I, I was thinking uh, of a scary thought as you said that about you know that people can hide things even though that they seem to be completely exposing themselves and that there are you know mm. informations about us you know with with mobile technology we're gonna you know with, let's say with google buzz you know like with the feature where you can find where people who are buzzing next to you are so here now you mm. may be able to tag to someone's data someone you don't even know like someone could be around the corner at the same concert as you and they can tag you to that concert even though you had you know you don't even know them it's not even about your friends and not even the facebook people who are who are you know tagging you now it's complete freaking strangers you know or mm. or when when it gets smart enough our 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 you know privacy basically goes to shit we're we're going to get to a point where we're out you know at the grocery store and suddenly you know all of our data about what we're shopping for is completely and utterly exposed you know where we've been where we've tracked ourselves we're all going to have our own fucking google maps where it's like here's Alachia's path you know and this is where she's been and where how long she stayed at this point and, you know and that's where i do f feel like there is a point where transparency is good and transparency can be a bit much where that data is great and i don't and then for the most part i don't really see a problem with it obviously you know with with the whole rob me you know <laughs> four square yeah. crap I, I can see yeah. an issue with it to some degree but ultimately i think we are going to have to get used to a world where where our rl you know presence becomes a little bit more transparent to everybody that yeah. that i know we don't we you may not be comfortable with that but you're going to have to get comfortable with it you know just like people had to get comfortable with email like, it's just going to be a, it's a norm it's going to be a fact you know the matter you know like you're you're going to have to get used to that there they're going to be there's going to be a world where we are very much more aware of of where people are connecting or interfacing in the real world uh, and and the same you know the same is going to apply for the meta too people are going to know where you frequent where you've been what you what you commonly are into and and that's that's going to be a norm I think you're going to see. And it's going to just become more and more present. It's going to become more and more normal. Uh, and people are going to get a little bit more used to it. Like, because, you know, when first Twitter first came out, right, people were like, why the hell do I need to know what you're doing right now? I mean, seriously. <laughs> and now it's like, okay, I got to tell you people, I'm like walking two steps to the bathroom, you know, peeing on the mayor of like toilet. And, you know, like, I, it's like, yeah, yeah you got to like, you gotta, everyone's got to know where everyone is all the time. And, and they, you know, updating their status and and you know like during a day a period of the day if you know someone doesn't twitter or someone doesn't say anything it's like they dropped out the freaking face of the earth where they gone yeah yeah stay on. i need to ask the breakfast question <laughs> <Stay on. laughs> it's crazy but <clears throat> see the trouble is of course this all sounds involuntary it sounds like you'll have no choice in the matter that you can't that this is a matter of privacy isn't it it's like it people who choose to be transparent on the internet and, and I, I agree with you that there are people who are you know maybe don't have as many dimensions or facets to themselves as other people they're not you know they're not complex people they're you know they they have what they like and they dislike and they're not that fussed about who knows that that's fine i understand that that level of transparency but they make that decision to share what they want to share are you, are you saying that at some stage in the future we're going to have that decision taken away from us or I don't know if it'll be taken away from us as in like, bam, there you go. I freaking you know stripped you down naked and uh, I hope you, uh, <laughs> I hope you shaved today or whatever you know and 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 showered and stuff. No, I I don't think it's gonna be. Like, I think what will happen is it'll become part of the culture. People are gonna you're gonna start to see it step by step. I mean you're seeing it right now like with Facebook, right? And and Google Buzz to some degree and obviously Twitter. It's just gonna keep building upon itself. You know, as like I said, as data is building. It's just going to get to the point where people are going to be constantly utilizing that data and you're going to see it. You're going to, there's there's never going to be a time where you don't sync with someone and you don't exchange information about someone where they don't know what the last 10 movies you watched were, uh, the last mm. 10 places you ate, what you chose for dessert, you know, what your favorite drink is. That all is, and then you're going to get used to that. You're going to get, it, you're going to get used to knowing that about someone. You're going to love 
I think people are really going to appreciate not having to, the, being able to just skip that, the bullshit phase of, so what's your name? Are you married? What's your age? Uh, how many kids do you have? What's your relationship like? Mm -hmm. And just know, and then, and then well, get, conversation, they're going to skip all that. Right. And then get to the connection, straight to the connection of where, where you, where those little, those little nubbins fit, you know, and then just to see. And the only issue I see with that, the problem I fear about that is that we're going to get to that point where, like you were saying, right, that that it's going to become this online store for relationships, right? Mm, pick and choose. Yeah. yeah. Where it's going to I, be I want somebody, I, I'm looking for somebody that, that connects to seven nubbins. I don't want nobody connecting below seven. I, you know, I don't want, why would I waste my time on this person who I can talk to about two or three different subjects when there's all this school that I can talk to a dozen subjects about, you know? And right. what happens then? Do you, do you, see, this is the, this is the, I, I kind of agree. I, I kind of agree that we are moving towards this where everything you do, the, the internet is so pervasive. Your 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 constant reviewing of what you buy and, and and what you look at and all that that's very pervasive. And all that information is there. We've already said in the past that regardless of how how you may want to sort of keep it those uh, trails uh, unfollowable, other people are doing it for you. You know, people taking your photos, as I said, people taking your photo there, they're on their uh, iPhone and they're saying, oh, you know, such such is next to me at the concert, uh, I'll tell everybody about that, that kind of thing. So it does kind of seem that that information is going to be available. Now, the next phase, of course, is how do people use it? How is it going to be used? What's it going to be, you know? And this is, this is where it really starts to get a bit scary for me. It's where people will be making decisions based upon compatibility all the time you see it you see it now don't you you see it now on these constant i don't know how many now there must be a, there must be a, for the 400 million people there must be 400 million applications that ask you to rate your films and rate your music and rate the tv shows you like you know rate the type of food you like you know as well as anybody there's thousands of them and then what does it do it goes through your friends list who've done the same application and it matches you up it says uh, this person you've known all your life and you've considered a very lifelong friend doesn't like the same films you like. Does that mean that that friendship is somehow less? Or I mean, it's just it just like I said, it just scares the crap out of me. Yeah. The compatibility is certainly based upon like-mindedness. It's it, if you have nothing in common with somebody, you're going to have a very hard time becoming having a connection with that person. You have to have. You have to be of like mind. You have, there has to be some points of connection. Fine, but there's also the myriad points of, that you don't even understand, you don't even know about certain things that person did to yet. Or you know, you didn't. How many times have you heard? Oh, thanks for recommending that music. I didn't think I'd like it, but I did. Or right. You know, this is a movie. This is a movie I'd never would have watched unless you'd said it. This has happened to, to the two of us. You recommended films to me. No way would I have watched that film if you hadn't recommended it because I happen to trust your opinion on certain things, not very much, but not certain things, I go ahead and I watch that movie and I'm like, yes, that's a, that's a freaking fantastic movie. I wouldn't have watched it otherwise. You know, this, this, is, a, this, is, this is where this starts to get problematic for me, this, this idea that, you can, that you, can, you can base relationship decisions upon compatibility, pre-set-up pre compatibility. You see, it's crazy. Yeah, I fear, I fear what it's going to do to what we perceive as community and how, how we interact as a community because the community isn't just a bunch of people who go, oh, yes, we're all Democrats or, yes, we all, you know, voted for... That's the Borg. Yeah, yeah, and, uh, well, I don't have a problem with the Borg, but that's a whole, different, board, that's a whole right? different subject right there. Um, but that that you can't, like, so so say, like, uh, we were in Vine Point, right, and we're talking to someone who came in and, and we, for some reason, I guess we were talking about men in dresses I don't know why but we were and it floored someone really it did in, in the channel was like the idea of, of transsexual men the idea of of men who really appreciate wearing women's clothing and 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 trying to trying to you know like wrap his head around it you mm. could at least see like it's alien, wasn't it? Right, it was alien to him. It was just like, what? That's no, that's just, that's never, what is that? It doesn't even like process in the person's brain. It's like, there's no man would, would freaking, you know, mm -hmm. walk out 
you know, of his house, or not not even just, in, no man could be a man with balls and, and still wear a dress and, and hose mm -hmm. and, and, and... That is quite true, though, because it is quite, you know, it's very hard to know what to do with your balls. And <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but... But when you interact with people that you don't normally have the, the freaking all the, the tick boxes, like you were saying, you know, you, you, don't, you don't tick all the boxes, you know, and if you don't tick all the boxes, you're in the shit can, uh, that you were saying, that that, that, that exchange, that's, that's the board, that to me is the board mentality, right? It's, it's, it's not just, okay, you've now been assimilated to the Borg and now all of a sudden, you know, you've been brainwashed. The Borg absorbs all of your fucking information too. You know, like mm. so, it's not like you get brainwashed and then all of a sudden, like no, there's no like you know, you all have one singular entity and thought that gets they races your mind and then you know copies itself over you know all the shit that you bring to it. No, like the the Borg mentality for me is it encompasses everything you fucking like have in your head and and you know and suddenly it's spread to everyone else and that that's to me that's the beauty of of uh, diversity within a community and that the, the, the fear that I, you know, you and I were just talking about is that you don't have that opportunity where if you live in a culture where you only, you know, you only associate yourself in groups of people that like the same things as you and, and you, you mm. can jive and there's, no, I mean, there's nothing wrong with being able to really connect with people and, and it's, and I think it's great, like, like the, the, uh, the flip side of it is that it is great that you can finally find people that do share your interests, that do, you know, you can find those niches that you would never think you would be able to find and be able to share, you know, a whole realm of activities with people that you would never be able to uh, in real life because you found them, you know, the, the pool online, you know, the 400 million Facebookers, you don't have that access in real life. You have 400 million people to define interests, common interests with, you're going to find usually a pretty good group that you wouldn't normally. And the, yeah, but then, and then on the other side, you know, the destruction of community is, is when we say, when we have these, these uh, separations where we don't say, your box can't overlap my box, you know, like, just because you checked yes or no doesn't mean that we can't have a conversation where we say, you know, like, like, mm -hmm. like we were saying, where it's too much transparency, where something will come along that will just basically turn you off and that person immediately, where you know everything about them, and you see the, you see that little, the highlighted pink box at the bottom, and you're like, uh, no, like, uh -oh. that one, no, I'm sorry, I don't care if we checked every single box, you know, um, all the way down the list, that one little one at the bottom, you check that, forget it, we're not, we can't associate with each other, because I think that that's the most powerful transition of connectivity is, is being able to inspire people to to continue to to grow in their thinking and to mm. yeah and to inspire people to really react or learn how to react differently uh to to different modes of, of connection and yeah that i yeah i agree it's 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 a little scary as to what that culture might do to that so that we have you know nothing but a bunch of i don't know of extremely polarized right uh and what, what you end up with is, is lots of ghettos you end up with you end up with social ghettos you end up with people grouping together and this is what happens in real life <clears throat> people like-minded people will gather together you see in lots of countries where for instance there'll be a, a jewish community for instance i mean i'm, I'm talking uh, you know very real life stuff here and they've been an Indian community. These people group together because they are like minded, you know, they ha they have the same likes and loves and desires. So they all they all they all group together. And what tends to happen in those communities is they become very insular, very introverted, they don't like change, they don't like anything coming from the outside. There's this concept of an outside that that will somehow invade these communities. And the 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 joy of the internet, if anything, if anything the joy of the internet is the, the, to be able to revel in the diversity of it, to 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 to, to experience and see things that you would never have had a chance to do before it, this, this explosion of the meta, you know, and and to then to say to yourself, well, I will then become insular again because I will only connect with those people that tick all my boxes. That that that's like you know, it's just hospitalization of of the whole glory of what the internet is and what it can be you know it just it just it drives me crazy that that would be even a possibility yeah that's that's a, it, and it's just it's just sort of like we're kind of like we're coasting along and we're sort of watching this grow and 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 wondering whether or not you know as we see the translation of 
uh, or not the translation, but the the uh, the fluid exchange between meta and RL start to get more and more efficient. Mm -hmm. That you wonder how what this hybrid, this mutation, is actually going to look like. And I see, you know, an optimist would see great possibilities, and that it's going to really change the way we communicate as human beings, the way we educate, the way we you know we evolve. And other people are going to see it as the complete destruction. You know, the pessimist is going to see like it's going to be, you know, a, a, a dystopian society, right? With that much, you know, control of of of, of data, of of um, how much we control each other's lives by you know the, the mediums of online activities. I mean, just I mean, can you imagine if like say Google shut down tomorrow? Like, what would happen mm -hmm. to the world productivity? Like, it would go sky high. Uh, what would happen to us as, as human there beings? There will be certain ways to be working. Yeah, or, yeah. I mean, I, it, that's that's what I'm, that's the, that's the part where people are just like, yeah, it could completely go to shit like like that. I mean, and but uh, yeah, I think I think we're we're kind of just sort of holding our breath and sort of waiting and and trying to contribute, you know, obviously to to a world where we we do take the information and the opportunities we have online and apply them into the world and vice versa, you know, and I'm, <clears throat> I don't know, I'm kind of, it, it's hard for me, obviously, because I come from a standpoint where I, I have always appreciated the meta existence more, right? Mm -hmm. And so I, I can't objectively say, because there are some people who come, you know, both ways and, and they see, they have a bigger picture, in, in, in my opinion, than I do of of like what the pros and cons are. But for me, you know, I, I'm looking at this and I'm, I'm seeing, I'm seeing a little bit more of the pessimistic side where. That's a shock. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> where I, I see the saturation of data coming in and people think that they're connecting, mm. but I don't think they really are. I don't think that the, the way that data is being transferred between people and the way it's being utilized and the way it's being aggregated is actually real connections. So, yeah, I'm a little bit pessimistic. Yeah, see, it's kind of going back to this, we were talk, talking earlier about the, all these multitude of applications on Facebook, and one thing, I, I was talking to somebody the other day, and they said, um, oh, I see you like, actually, it was, it was Phoenix, we were talking about Phoenix, and he said, I had sent in this uh, audio that's kind of sparked off a lot of this extra conversation. And he was saying, oh, I see you like Howard Stern. I'm a big, you know, I'm a fan of Howard Stern. So, it's not everybody's cup of tea, but I happen to like his style and stuff. And um, I, a wee while ago, I signed up to Last.fm. That's the one, isn't it? And it, and I just left it. I didn't. I, I, I installed it, and for a little while, I was looking at what other people were listening to and stuff. And uh, it's, it just starts up when the kids starts up. So I hadn't even thought that it was. What does it do? What, tell scrubble. me the word again. Scrubble. And that's a crazy word. But anyway, <laughs> so scrubble, scrubbling away in the background. Mm -hmm. And I was actually offline uh, last weekend. I had some internet connection issues, and when I came back, when I logged back on, it scrubbled all the stuff I'd been listening to. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it backed it up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, what the hell? Because obviously I was offline, so I was listening to tons of stuff. I didn't. I had nothing else to do. <clears throat> so, um, so anyway, but this it caused this connection. You know, with, with Phoenix, the guy we talking about, he, he likes how certain stuff. So. We have a connection there, we've been talking about that back and forth. But what I was talking to this other person, and they were saying, um, oh, I see we, we, we're compatible, we're 82% we're compatible on the books we read. And I was like, oh, interesting. Yeah, it's, it's, it's sort of one of these Facebook things. So that's interesting. What books are they? What, what books are we compatible? I, I don't know. I don't know. But we're 82% compatible. <laughs> it wasn't the books themselves that he, he, was he was excited about. It was the fact that it was 82%. The number was the important thing. You know right, what I mean? That you were, yeah, it, that, not why you were connecting, <laughs> but that you could connect, yeah. Look, you connect. A, <clears throat> yeah. Mm -hmm. And the, also, I was looking at, uh, uh, I, I, actually, going back a wee bit, I'm sorry that this is a bit sort of disjointed, but we, I think we are a little bit similar in as much as if we, if someone gave me a box of things to tick that I would be interested in, I'd tick all of them. Because I'm interested in the per I'm interested in people. I'm interested in that diversity. And I think you are similar. Or you know, you correct me if I'm wrong. That 
because because one of the core interests that I personally have is people and how they can be diverse and what makes them tick. I want I want I will tick all those boxes because that's that person. That that is that's the essence of them. So we, we've talked about this before, where you'll talk to somebody and they'll come up with some crazy idea or they'll come up with something some of the you know others may frown upon and you'll be quite accepting of it. You won't necessarily agree with the idea in as much as it is something that you would have, want to have within your own life or want to do or whatever, but the fact that that's part of that person and that makes them interesting, that makes them diverse and makes them multifaceted is, 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 what, is what, what you know, floats your boat. But so you're coming yeah. at it from a point where you, your threshold is probably really high, right? So say, oh, yeah, yeah that's say, a perfect word. That's a word for you choose, isn't it? A threshold, right? Yeah. And yeah, say you know you're into, you're all into uh, uh, William Gibson, and and you're into sci-fi, and you have all these really points of common interest, and you get to talking, and there's just you know they're very mm -hmm. knowledgeable about Tolkien, and but then suddenly out of the blue one day they talk about how they believe in leprechauns. Can mm -hmm. you? still respect them even though they believe in leprechauns. Are you that open-minded that you can you can bypass the fact that they are very knowledgeable about all these other things and that they're they seem to be respectable to a certain degree and then you you find out that they they, they you know they believe in little, you know, men that bury gold pots and, you know, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Can you are you really that open? And that's the thing. People always say, yeah, uh, you know, I I want all the check boxes. I w come on, let me have them all. I'll you know, I I'm open and stuff. You will eventually get to a threshold where you won't be able. You'll, you'll oh, something yeah, sure. will devastate. It you. wouldn't be leprechauns, by the way, because they're obviously true. <laughs> unicorns, yeah, yeah. So. Oh, did you say unicorns or leprechauns? I said leprechauns. Oh yeah, because it was unicorns. We're going to end this conversation now because that's mental. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yes, yeah, of course, everybody has a threshold. I mean, the thresholds are the extremes for me, and probably the, ex the very extremes for you. you know, your threshold. We, I think we have big thresholds. I mean, if we, you know, if we're going to go for those words. I can't even say that word properly, but anyway. So, what lots of people would be turned off by, it wouldn't necessarily turn us off an individual because that the fascination is the individual themselves. The fact that they have all, you know, that's what I was saying earlier. That it's not. I I don't believe in leprechauns, but the fact that you believe in leprechauns is fascinating to me. See what I mean? You, that's 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 where it goes. You know, there are of course thresholds. There are uh, certain beliefs. You know, bigotry and racism and you know this type of thing, or you know, extreme ridic you know, extreme sexual sexual things, which I have a threshold with. But you know, there's a wide. It's wide. <laughs> you know, and 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 even and. Even given that, even given those thresholds, I'm still k kind of fascinated to know why. Yeah, I'm even the, even those extremes. I'm still I would probably have a hard time dealing with a person, but I'm kind of fascinated to know why, how their brain works that way, and what 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 has led them to have these very outlandish beliefs. Maybe. You know, I'm thinking about maybe maybe this is the point. Maybe this is the the extreme point, right? Or like the the quintessential point that it's not about the person. That it's that that sociology uh, and and community and the way that human beings connect with each other as social creatures is not about you. It is not about every piece and particle of you. It's not about who you really are. It's not about how many layers you have. It's not about what you're into. It's about where you connect to another person. That that I think is should be the focal point. That it's that that's the problem with the, I think the approach right now is it's it is about you. It's about what your Twitter feed is and what you say and who you are and and you know what your status is and and what your background is. That 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 all is just a is is a, should be just a given like it's an existence. It shouldn't be the focal point. The the focal point should be is where where we as humans can interact. And I don't mean like can interact isn't like you know we both like the same things so we can discuss the same things. But like where are the points where we like we shoot you know uh, the the hole through both of us you know and and you know we we see where the you know the liquids mesh and 
that mm -hmm. I think that piece, that little particle where the the, the two individuals and the, or the two particles of a person can connect, that's that to me is that should be the, the focal point. That it doesn't matter if you believe in like or what you believe in or or who you really are, what your what your deepest darkest secret is. It's it's where as we human beings can hit each other on the mark. Like for example, let's say Nicole uh, Spagolo, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. I think that's her last name. Uh, Lady Zoli. Yeah, Lady Zoli, Zoli yeah. Uh, Wood Whisperer. You know, I knew of her for a really long time, right? Mm -hmm. And and I, 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 you know, kind of just like, you know, you, you, know, you see people in the background and you, you kind of know who they are and you, you, you keep hearing about them. And, you know, fo like, friended me on Flickr. Mm -hmm. And so I friended back and I started, I was like, oh, cool, she has a Flickr account. You know, me and Flickr, right? And I started stalking mm -hmm. like crazy. It's going yeah. through all the pictures and like tagging, Flickr is your crack commenting or whatever. And, you know, and then, you know, sure enough, like that led to uh, Twitter follow. And then, and then suddenly she had you know, followed me on last FM and, you know, I followed her back and it looked like we had, I looked at the common points we had and we both like, we both connected on the fact that we we're both Mayor fans, John Mayor fans. And, you know, suddenly it was like, you know, she saw that I said, you know, I saw that we kind of exchanged a few words about that. Mm -hmm. And, and, um, and then, you know, then she shared some music with me that I had never heard of, like, that I'd never heard before, you know, from old concerts or whatever that I just loved. I was absolutely, uh, I just loved that I got, you know, to, to sh that she was able to share that with me and then I shared her, you know, um, uh, an audio folder myself. But do we connect on any other level right now? No. Just that mm -hmm. little point of contact, right? You know, that, that doesn't mean that, that because we're not BFFs, that I don't really know much about her, she doesn't know much about me, that we still, we still connected on, on a point, right? Like that we did have a, a moment where there was an exchange as human beings that, 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 that we are, you know, that we were able to have that social exchange and that's stuff that you build upon, right? And so those mm -hmm. are the moments that I think are key that it's not that important that we have everything in common or that we get each other all the time, that we all understand each other, we all like every freaking part of each other, but that we're able to have those moments and those those points of connection, I think that's, that should be the key focus, I think, of, of the way our culture uh, should develop. Like, and, and well, for me, that'd be the most ideal, anyways. Mm. But say, for instance, that uh, I use Nicole as an example, and the example I'm going to use is nowhere near. It's not Nicole, but anyway. So you, know. so you connect on the John Mayer thing. Nicole's completely transparent, and you 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 go for your usual checklist of your stalking abilities, and you do a search, and you find this and that, and all of a sudden you find out that at the weekend, Nicole goes out and she, she bludgeons puppy dogs. You know, she loves bludgeoning puppy dogs. It's, it's, it's you know, she belongs to the bludgeoning puppy dog league. And you said, you know, does that mean that all of a sudden that you, that, that's your threshold? That, that regardless of that one connect, regardless of the connection on the music side of things, that's the, that's the end of any possible relationship. Well, the, that's, just, that's the thing is that those are things you can't help. Those are things that are going to or exist. Or puppies? Or yeah. <laughs> well, <only me. laughs> who, who a person is on all levels is something you cannot help, and that is something we should never try to control. Mm. Uh, like, you know, to a degree, right? You know, they're like bludgeoning puppies. I would like, I would really hope that our society tries to lend Just to be itself clear, towards. Nicole Spagnola does not bludgeon puppies. Just <laughs> be clear about that. It yeah. was just an example. <laughs> but people are who they are, and and you're going to that that shouldn't be the focus that that we shouldn't worry about the fact that we may find something about someone that that kills our respect for someone or that that devaluates the points that we connect on i i don't think that everyone i meet and and the appreciations i have for them you know like like a like fate for example right i always mm -hmm. <laughs> he's like he's a perfect he's a great, example. He's a great example of everything um, I have a strong, like for me, I have, I feel like I have a strong familiarity with him. And the, mm. the funny thing is, is it's, you he know, was your you, Jedi master for a long time. <laughs> yeah. Because for the longest time when we were in Bind Point, when Bind Point was first starting out it, at late at night, it was me and him and we were exchanging wow tips. You know, he would, mm. he was in a high end raiding guild and I was just starting to raid again. And, and he, we would be talking about strategies. And so we were connecting on these little tiny points, right? In the future, you know, as, as we progress, you know, and as more people come into Bind Point, he becomes more and more, like, I, I begin to see more and more of his personality, right? 
and he's mm. very abrasive you know like he's 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 the type of person who says what he means he doesn't it, you know like he's not going to bullshit and a lot of times he does things to sh for pure shock value that's who he is and mm. why I'm able to use him is because he is so transparent about that that he doesn't he's not he doesn't give a fuck about exactly anything. and so that even though like even though like parts of that kind of like in the back of my head like raise you know back of my neck raises the hairs on the you know like sometimes when he says things like mm -hmm. it's just like oh man what don't follow any of his links yeah course. yeah and you know he no. just but because i had those those points of connection with him that that that, that was to me like powerful enough for me to accept you know who he is as a whole because i still knew that i could connect you know, with him, I like I did have a connection with him at some point that I did form that thread, you know, of connection. And although I may not be able to respect all the things he says, and although I may not get all the things he says, and you know, and a lot of people basically write you know him off because he's so abrasive, that mm -hmm. I'm able to say, look, I, I, you know, I have a fundamental understanding of how he connects with people, and and uh, and that just because he did hit that pink check. Marker in the box at the at the very end mm -hmm. at some point didn't didn't destroy that for me that connection is still just as strong that I still had that connection that point of connection that I I have you know a, a cognitive memory of and for me it's it 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 overrid um, and and actually kind of enhanced my ability to filter a lot of the things that would normally turn people off from him immediately. Mm. I can certainly see that it wouldn't it wouldn't negate. The connection you already had because the conversations you had in the past and the tips and the so on and so forth and the mentoring and that type of thing but is there not a point where a certain element of a person's personality cock blocks the relationship that there's no that that fundamentally something you uncover will therefore mean that that relationship will go no further, that it will change to the point where it becomes uh, irreconcilably recoverable, you know, that you can't. That has to be, that has to happen. That must be the case sometimes. The only thing that I can think of would be, wouldn't even be a, a check mark box, you know, because even, even when you get to a point where you just, well, at least for me, whenever I get to a point where I, I just don't respect a person anymore, or I. I don't get them or I don't feel like we're connecting that are, you know, on all the, all the same levels as before that I could still feel like I could have a conversation with that person that I could still try to find other boxes. Mm -hmm. We could, we could, you know, like pierce through the only thing I can think of wouldn't be a box check. It would be betrayal. Like they, that's the only thing for me personally, it would be mm -hmm. like if someone betrayed me or betrayed my trust that I wouldn't. It's not, a, it's not a, 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 an opinion they held. It's, it's, it's an action they take. Right. Right. So, and I know that's not the case for some people. Some people, it's like once you hit that mark or once once you cross that line, that's it. You know, I'm not going to even try. For me, I even though I even though I have arguments with people, even though I say like, you know, God, what an asshole! Like, I can't believe they they did this with me or said that something to me. Like, you know, for example, the person who basically told me to go kill myself on Facebook, right? Mm. Even then, even though I I feel like that person really, you know, a flicker was it? A flicker, sorry, flicker, flicker, yeah, flicker. I feel like that person would kind of like jabs me, you know, like in the heart, you know, a little bit. Mm. I still, I still like into the back of my head would have liked to have been able to engage and, and to discover and to, 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 to say, look, you have a perception of something about me and I, mm. you have a, and I have a perception of what I thought you perceived. And I would still want to try to connect with that person and, and to try to, you know, try, try to figure out even if we could, even even if their their opinion of me never changed, and you know my opinion opinion of them never changed, I would still seek to, I could I could still seek to, try to connect with that person and, and to discover like what their mode of thinking was and and to let them know that you know I had a certain mode of thinking and you know culturally you know we come with our own you know predispositions or whatever. But, uh, so for me like there are. Even even though I get really mad at people, or if I have a disagreement with them, or you know they 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 tick some box that just really like irked me to death. Mm -hmm. It's not like I couldn't at some point try to find those little points of connection. And that's why I say those points of connection. So that's the key point, right? Because you don't need, I don't I don't need to connect with you on all levels. I think that that 
if you think you're going to be able to find, you know, a group of people that are open enough to be, that you're going to be able to be yourself completely with, I mean, good luck. I just don't think you're going to find that one person who, or a group of people that you're going to be able to connect with on all levels. You know, there's just, I, I don't think we should focus on, on that. I think that's unrealistic, that I think we should focus in on the moments where we can pierce through to another person and connect with them and focus on all those connections. Yeah, I think I think you're a relatively uncommon example, <laughs> <laughs> if I could be polite to say that. But in as much as that, okay, if you were given if you were given the entirety of a person on paper or on screen, and you could look at them and you could see they were exposed to you. You could see all the the nastiness and and you know all the all the guts of it. All. You would probably still persist in a relationship, regardless of <laughs> regardless of what you saw on that screen. What we what we've been talking about is this 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 move towards having all that information available, and then and people having a limited desire to connect to a certain degree that they you know that they want to. That if they're going to have a connections, they they want them to be as as good as possible. And I think that the majority of people, given all that information and given the tide of information that we've been talking about, would 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 basically say, okay, that that lot go into the ship pile. I will take these one, two, three, four, five people, and these are the people I want to connect with. And these are the people that I will be. And that's what we we're talking about—the scariness of potentially having these type of ghettoization of uh, groupings and communities. Because I. I you know, I think it would be wrong for us, either of us, to say, not that we're normal, <laughs> not for it, but, you know, that, that we necessarily represent the 400 million people that are on Facebook, for instance, you know, that, that we're a good example of them. So I don't, I don't think we are. I think I think we're, we're not. Cause, and it goes back to what I was saying before. We're as, in, well, me personally, as interested in what makes that person tick as the things that are ticking, if you know what I mean? <laughs> So basically, you're saying that uh, everything we just said is bollocks to the rest of the world. <laughs> doesn't it's apply. Not, it doesn't apply. Not complete bollocks, but <laughs> what, what I'm saying is that I think I think this is this is the point of of these these may not necessarily be changes for the best. That if you are espousing a view that everybody should be completely transparent, and then you give everybody the tools to see all that information, and then of course the making sure that people have grown up with the ability to assimilate that information and quickly digest it. The guy that can take what I've read over the last 43 years and break it down to 82% compatibility, you know, and then then go the next step, which is to make a decision on how you now progress with that individual, how you, whether you make a connection or not, you know, or whether you employ the person. Th th those stages, there's a, there's a disconnect there, isn't there? That, that, that's the, that, it's that scary route, isn't it? You compare yourself with other people, you give that a score, you base a decision whether you want to progress with the relationship with that score, and then you do that and, and negate everybody else that doesn't meet that score. Yeah, the that problem is scary. Well, the, yeah, the, the scary, the scary part about that is like, what, what do people do with that reality, right? What they do is they, they create a, a person, a superhuman, right, of themselves, which mm. you can do, right? And uh, that, that you can. What? You start to yeah. control. You start to recontrol your data again, right? You start to course, manipulate yeah. your data. Yeah. Yeah, of course. Then we come right down to the, the the difference between real life and online life. And as much as that, in real life, I can't be twelve stone. <laughs> you know, I can't. You know, I have a breath problem. I can't. I don't have a breath problem. That's not true. I clean my teeth every day. But you know, I can't have better hair. You mm -hmm. know, I can't. I just can't. These are the things I can't do. You know, like I. I, I I can't have a stronger handshake. Maybe I can work on that. I don't know. But um, what I'm saying is, the things that I can't change about myself, I can't change that first impression that somebody would have if I met them in the street, because that is, I'm this it. So that's what you get. And that's the package. On the internet, however, I certainly can change that. And this is where we come down. This is where we start to get into that area where you put your best side forward. You know, you you. God forbid, some people even, you know, will make up a persona. Like you said, you have a superhuman persona. Everything, all the good stuff's up front. All the good stuff is what, what people can find if they went looking for you on the internet. 
everything else is hidden away or not even or has never been there you've, you've, you've from day one you decided you were going to be you know super friend on the internet and look, and and we even have people who will decide for whatever reason they want to connect with an individual and then they will chip away all the stuff that doesn't connect and they will only show to that individual they want to connect with all the stuff they know will hit home you know they, they'll they, they'll talk the talk and they'll walk the walk of the person they're trying to connect with and and lo and behold they connect you know because of course they are because you know they're saying this they're speaking the same language that they're, they're, they're saying the same stuff they're thinking what you're thinking or, or so you believe and then sadly further down the line you realize that's not the case and that it was all uh, it was all make-believe well, they kind of push that culture on on Facebook a lot. Like I, I notice it's kind of weird where you know with the the whole liking of the group thing and then being associated with different groups and inviting people to different groups or whatever, mm. and fan pages or whatever. That that a lot of times when you do that, you alienate people right away. Like say, what if what if I saw you know a, a friend you know and I thought you know uh, yeah I, I really like this person I connected with them, but then suddenly I see. On Facebook, that they're in a group that says, you know, we want to kill all people who like to drink diet sunkist. <laughs> what am I supposed to? How am I supposed to react to that? Right? You know, like <laughs> my staple, right? Uh, yeah. Oh, how what am I, would I would I immediately say, okay, that's it. You know, I can't. And th this is what that data does. You know, I see it every day on Facebook. It, it does alienate people immediately. Suddenly, you're seeing people, de you know, where they felt like they could all connect together again. Suddenly, they're split back into Democrats, Republicans, Libertarians, uh, you know, mm -hmm. high, you know, fundamental Christians, liberals, atheists. You know, like you see people starting to go right back down those lines of, you know, uh, of being polarized and and you know that 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 is focused on who you again. It's focused in on like you know. Uh, uh, of, of everything about who you are, not about you know the 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 connections you can make. Although I mean, I guess maybe maybe the other side of looking is that those are that's the connection, right? That the connection is that you you are in these focus groups, and that that's all you focus on is connecting to like-minded people and to people who are into the same shit as you all the time. And I don't know, I ca I kind of like the anonymity of things. Like, and and that's a topic we're going to just you know it's it's on on our list is 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 you know the the guy who developed 4chan or whatever. That, that we cannot necessarily disregard some sense of anonymity because it does offer us that flexibility of connecting on certain points without having the transparency transparency kind of just completely obliterate that and destroy it you know that pink box that checkbox at the bottom mm. i think we've come to the conclusion it's a very complex subject yes <laughs> <laughs> well i mean and it's also it's just developing right it's a culture that we're watching grow right now and develop itself and form itself right now so we're just at the cusp of watching it and and being a part of it and uh that's yeah that's that's really it's really important for people to be aware of what's going on so that they can help form um a culture that they want to be a part of right and so they don't just allow the industry to dictate how we are going to how we're going to be humans online mm -hmm. yeah. mm. Yeah, and that's a real danger, isn't it? It's a real danger that the tools are focused and shaped in such a way as to uh, as to as to kind of guide, not guide, but force us down certain paths of connection. Mm -hmm. mm. So I probably won't sleep well tonight. <laughs> Night <laughs> nightmares of, yeah. of having your emails exposed and all your Google Docs revealed and your, your oh, Facebook likes know. and your YouTube uh. visits. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, my why is that somebody gets hold of my supermarket shopping list. <laughs> I'll be done for. <laughs> Especially my doctor self. Yeah. Have me up against a wall. <laughs> but it's uh, another fascinating subject. I mean, the, the, the thing that I found with these these last these discussions that we have is the just how they they just interconnect all the time that they're constantly connecting and connecting and connecting and connecting and i guess that's that's the whole point isn't it really that it's just all it's just all there you know you the the ability to see life in all its many manifestations and its diversity is just all there and uh you know you're having the time and the inclination to dive deep is, is is fantastic yeah well what i think about is what i think about is really 
positive to look at, you know, I don't really say many positive things, right? But <laughs> the positive thing that to look at right now is that we're able to discuss these things that they, I'm actually, you know, I'm seeing people discuss these things online all the time now mm -hmm. is that, that it really focuses in on the, 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 the organic nature, the, 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 the life breathing nature of, of the metaverse, that it's not this cold biological, uh, not, uh, cold digital, you know, um, static data that, that it actually, you know, it breathes, it breathes like human beings that we are, we are a part of it and, you know, we are it and, you know, we, we are, um, what the, is it Tim, Tim Riley, as he said, uh, Riley, he said, um, that we, we are Skynet. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean that that is that is definitely the positive. The yeah. positive is that this is out there in the open. It, it's kind of like um, in the past, it was very easy for governments and big business to work behind the scenes and do things and affect our real life environment and uh, you know basically be complete douches about stuff. The good thing about the the, the good side of the internet is that as it becomes as it becomes a culture and becomes or the culture develops people can see it happening you know you can see it and, and there are people who are standing up and using those tools the, those 400 million people on facebook they want those 400 million people on facebook to know privacy issues that are happening now and you know how things are going to change and they try to get as many of them aware of these situations as they can and without the, the without the tools that are developing and that we need to keep an eye on, you wouldn't be able to tell people how they're developing, you know, so there's definitely positives there. I mean, the fact that we're here talking about it and nobody's come kicking down the door and uh, taking us away in chains is pretty damn good. <laughs> they're going after the leprechaun worshippers first. Oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> and, and those unicorn bastards. <laughs> <laughs> so, we didn't pick a closing song for today, you know? Oh, well, I did pick a closing song, but you... Are you going to sing it? The whole idea. What, my old man's a dustbin? Uh-huh, yeah. Well, see, I did, I would have done, but then I did ask you to get hold of the Mormon Tabernacle Choir, and uh, <laughs> as far as I can tell, since I don't hear them tuning up in the background, I guess you didn't do that. <laughs> oh, well. And not that anybody want to hear me sing anything, trust me. I think there's at least <laughs> a few There's people. no one. There's just people. <laughs> Oh, uh, you know, there's there's someone who's gonna check that box. That box checked on someone's list. <laughs> I, I know, I know, cats that cats out their ears when I start singing. So. All right. Well, I'll add a. I'll, I'll we'll figure out a song and I'll add it at the end. So. Yeah, I'm sure it'll be something uh, awful. <laughs> All right. Uh, great discussion again. Uh, lots to think about and probably a spurt about th three or four more topics. So. Well, that's the thing that's mm -hmm. I was saying earlier, the, the collectionist of all these com yeah. conversations. Yeah. Um, I know it was a little bit up and down and round about, and we did, you know, occasionally we get a little bit disjointed, but the conversation, there's some nuggets there, nice nuggets. That's cool. Yep, so until next time, uh, see you on the flip side. I haven't really got a goodbye, goodbye have I yet? What was I going to do? I was going to say something funny, wasn't I? Yeah, you were uh, you were gonna make up one for every week, right? Like some sort oh, of. Dude, that's like so much hard work. Is it called Cockney? Cockney. <laughs> did I say it right? Cockney. 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 I don't know. Uh, what I'll do is I'll, I'll use a classic okay. from the Cockney. Rub your tummy, governor. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> See ya. Bye. <laughs> Thank mm -hmm. you.
biographies of my heroes. One of my heroes that I would read about and highlight would be uh, the great Stevie Ray Vaughan. I used to take a highlighter in the parts that inspired the shit out of me. And uh, I asked my mom one day if she would give me $500 and kick me out of the house on purpose so I could move to Austin. Because I read this part of the book where it said that Stevie Ray slept on pool tables and I thought it would be really cool that he spent a couple, night on, couple nights on pool tables. I thought that was going to be really romantic, you know? I thought it was going to be really romantic. I was going to pay my dues as I went along and I was going to fall and I was going to get bruised and I was going to get cuts on top of those bruises. And I was a little disappointed that that didn't happen for about a minute. And then I was extremely thankful to you guys for coming out to shows and giving me the kind of life that went pretty instantly from obscurity to being able to play on stages for people. But it's very, very cool and it's a thrill to be received in this city where I always wanted to move to and start playing blues. And I hope that uh, if not now, someday maybe it all goes down in hindsight as being a new kind of blues. It might not sound exactly like blues, you know, but hopefully it's a new kind of blues and uh, it keeps moving along. So, so thank you guys very much and uh, it's a thrill to play here in this very moment on this very stage. So, uh, 